Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Fazbear Entertainment would like you to put your hands together for the one, the only, Freddy Fazbear. Rewritten! It was already frightening to see Moon in front of him, but seeing Chica and Roxy here in their ruined bodies was even worse. Both of them were still in the broken states that Gregory had left them in, and yet there they were, swaying back and forth on either side of Moon. He didn't have much time to take in their injuries. All that he really saw was the sticking smears on Chica's beakless face and the smoking holes where Roxy's eyes used to be. Chica's eyes were rabid, dilated, while Roxy's hot pink fox markings spazzed and flickered in and out like a bonfire. Both Chica's eyes and Roxy's stripes contrasted sharply with the darkness that made up the two figures, those glowing points seeming to hover in mid-air against their black silhouettes. Questions began to spiral in his head, unable to believe what he was looking at. How were they still moving? Hadn't they shut down? He thought that he had gotten rid of them for good. They should still be out cold. He then realized with sinking doom that if Moon found them like that, he might have been able to help them and... Oh no. Wait, hold on. What in the world happened to... But Roxy had already charged. Gregory dove out of the way just as Roxy slammed into Monty with the force of a speeding truck. The two animatronics hit the door, knocking it open again as Roxy thrashed on top of him. She was only swiping down at him with one arm, quickly making him realize that it was the only functioning arm that she had left. The other was crushed and twisted into a limp, dragging clump of metal, the byproduct of landing on the maze at that angle. Where is he? Roxy roared, her head pivoting back and forth, sharp ears spinning, trying to find a real target. Where is that little brat? Her face, the side of her face, it made him sick. Melted and twisted and scarred, the sockets black pits burned out craters staring straight through his soul. Gregory was taken out of the paralysis as Moon's form leaped up on top of a concession stand, his thin midnight blue figure glittering of starlight, the hooked wires slithering up into the air. Gregory screamed, scrambling to his feet, the hooks whipping down across his leg, barely missing him. In his disoriented panic, Gregory plowed into a rack of chips, knocking the whole thing over. Moon's hooks cut one of them open just as he escaped the pile, crashing past trash cans and collectible merch. Gregory began to crawl away as fast as he could, ducking his head beneath chairs and desks, doing all that he could to not knock anything over. Another crash made him bump his head into the counter, something behind him falling over, Chica's static-filled gasps far too close. He kept on going, bent low, avoiding every stray wrapper and napkin, veins roaring with the urge to bolt. He was almost there, almost out of Monty's attractions. He just had to find... Gregory stopped beside a ticket booth, the commotion pressing up behind him, looking out onto the pale tiles. There, in a streaking path, was the purple footprints. The trail led to the hall that connected the main lobby to the rest of the mall. A clicking sound behind him made him glance back, freezing in place from what he saw. The hooks were back, slithering up over every surface, wires webbing in a network towards him. Gregory turned and ran the moment that he saw that, slipping on the paint and sprinting out into the hall. He burst out into the open lobby, leg blazing of pain, moon practically on top of him, the sight of the purple paw prints leaping out at him before a crash made him trip from surprise. Gregory hit the tiles, his knees and elbows scraping open as he slid, remaining bandages ripping off the foot. He snapped his head back, seeing that Chica had clumsily charged at him and it instead hit Moon. Both of them were now tangled up on the ground, with Chica trying to shake his hooks out of her feathers, awful screeches erupting from the jagged hole in her face. Taking that brief chance that he was given, Gregory got to his feet and made a beeline in the direction the footprints were leading. They faded with each step, but their direction was clear, down the halls on either side of Monty's attractions, the ones that led to the rest of the expansive mall. Adrenaline swept him up in the desperate need to survive, making a mad dash for that hall, hitting his shoulder and slipping on the way in. He knocked over every trash can that he passed, not daring to look back, blocking out Moon's yells for him to stop, every step sending searing pain up his leg. He burst out into the rest of the mall and immediately crashed into a passing staff bot. Gregory got up, the world becoming a blur as he shoved it out of his way. Chica erupted out from behind him and fell on top of the staff bot as well, her candle eyes wild in the dark. Moon was gaining. He could hear his jangling bells, the incoming footsteps. 
Gregory didn't care to survey his surroundings. He just dove into the closest store, images spiraling past him. Beach carpet, a cash register, ropes to divide empty waiting lines. Gregory leaped behind a checkout counter just as Chica's huge metal body slammed to a stop behind him. The carpet scraped over his limbs as he tried to get a hold of himself, slapping his hands over his face, lungs spasming. <laughs> Chica stayed at the entrance. He couldn't see her from behind the counter, but he could hear her glitching sounds, her presence towering just out of sight. Keep going, he pleaded in his head. Move along. I'm not here. I'm not. Chica took a step. It clunked heavily against the tiles, sending a prickle up the back of his neck. She took several more. This time, though, they were muffled on the store's carpet. Her dim shadow crawled up onto the floor beside him, the ghastly sounds of a ruined face crackling through the air closer and closer. Gregory's lungs were on fire, his eyes darting frantically about, trying to find something, anything that could... His eyes locked onto the rack beside the checkout desk. Snacks of every kind waited there, chips and chocolate bars and packs of gum. Gregory shot out from under the counter, directly in her line of sight, and dumped all the snacks that he could reach onto the floor. <laughs> Chica's claws swiped out at him at first, catching on the back of his shirt, making him cry out in terror. He fell onto the other side of the pile, turning his head around to stare up at her looming figure as she lunged down at him. He curled up with a scream, waiting for the pain. It didn't come. He looked again. Chica was on top of the snacks instead, grabbing fistfuls of them, shoving them into the jagged hole in her face with the desperation of a starving animal. It didn't seem to be working, the food falling out the moment that she tried to stuff it in, but she kept on trying anyway, her botched voice screeching nonsense at him. Gregory tore his eyes away from the horrific display, scrambling to his feet and running directly into the darkness of the store. It appeared at first to be crowded by rows and rows of people, but he realized with slight relief that they weren't people. They were racks full of t-shirts, jeans, hoodies, a clothing store. Gregory burst into the nearest aisle, scarves flying past him. He turned a corner, another swerving around a pillar and finally diving into one of the circular racks, one with long dresses that draped to the floor. He hunkered there in the circle of fabric, banging his head against the bars strung above him. The world was covered in a veil of shadow, the dresses blocking up the noise of Chica, his breath hot on his face in the tiny hiding spot. Just as he had been doing all night, Gregory held his breath and listened. The clangs of Monty bashed and echoed from far away, but the sounds of Chica... The floor was carpet in here, the usual clicks and clanks he'd get from their footsteps now almost entirely gone. He couldn't even pinpoint which direction that she was coming from, much less whether it would be safe enough to risk trying to find a better hiding spot. He tried to peek beneath the clothes, looking off deeper into the dark store. Her muffled footsteps were getting closer. Gregory snuck below the dresses, on his stomach as he crawled out into the open, getting to his feet, the fabric brushing down his back. He kept low, sneaking away, his footsteps mercifully silent on the carpeting as well. He stayed like that as long as he could, and then ducked into another aisle, crouching in the middle between the hoodies and sweaters. Gregory casted his gaze around, the gray light of the mall an entire galaxy away. He was far from the entrance, too far. Just as he tried to think of some plan to go around Chica, Monty's yelp of pain cracked through the air, followed by several thumping, rapid footsteps that he recognized all too well. Where is he? Roxy howled. Chica, did you get him? <laughs> A burst of static from Chica sent terror down to his core, making a racket loud enough for Roxy to follow. Chica was only two aisles away from him, too close, too close. Gregory dropped down to the ground, crawling out from the sweater, his heart strangling him as he scrambled away, his back full of needles. He had to be honest with himself. Hiding beneath the clothes was probably not going to work. 
The urge to scream for Freddy grew more and more powerful, but he tried to hold it back as he passed aisle after aisle of clothes. The mannequins loomed above him, watching him with smooth, faceless heads. He caught sight of a low table with two more mannequins and folded stacks of jeans, diving beneath the crawl space, trying to suppress his frantic gasps. She was too close now, no matter how bad the hiding spot was. His back was pressed down by the narrow table's underside, the carpet burning across his skin knees. He covered his mouth again, lungs burning, heart thundering deafeningly in his skull as he listened. A thud of footsteps came from the left, where he had just been hiding. A commotion was at the entrance, Roxy's frustrated yells piercing the shadow-filled air. The click of hangers crept up on him. Lines of clothing were swept out of the way by Chica, searching for him in the middle of each island. A crash came much closer than before, Roxy's frustrated hiss closing in to block him from his original plan. Get up, get up! He wanted to get up and run, but he couldn't. He knew that he couldn't. Chica was too close. He gripped the carpet, his warm breaths causing sweat to beat on his neck. One of her feet stomped down right in his line of sight, claws smeared of bits of garbage. He took in a full breath and then closed his throat, falling still. Chica stepped closer, exiting an aisle. Her voiceless, static-filled gasps grated against his ears, the hangers sliding out of the way as she moved them, clothes swishing together. She was only a few meters away, both legs in view. His lungs grew hot, the pressure building. He had to breathe, needed to. Gregory kept his hands clenched to his face, trying to calm his erratic heartbeat. Chica staggered up to the table and then stopped. No, no, he couldn't. The static spazzed right above him. Her claws tapped on top of the table. He took in a slow breath, trying to stop the shivering in his chest. He held it again, listening. And Chica moved on. Gregory stayed, taking deep, measured breaths as slow as he could manage, his heart begging for more air as he restricted it further. When he felt it was safe, Gregory peeked his eyes open, looking around. He could still hear Chica behind him and Roxy off at the front. He crawled out from under the low table, crouched in the open as he took a look around, trying to figure out which way to go. The store was almost entirely dark, even though he adjusted to it the best that he could. Shadowy figures stood all around the edges of his vision, the t-shirts and sweatpants crowding in at all sides. He darted across the carpet, aiming for the outer walls, ducking behind each rack of clothes that he came across. Footsteps. Gregory halted, the clanking of machinery approaching. The magenta light that preceded it let him know exactly who it was. Gregory backed up, terror hitting him like bullets. He ran for the nearest clothes rack, hiding in the middle of it, the clothes swishing and clattering as they settled behind him. I heard that, Roxy growled, so much closer than he had imagined. Again, he fell back on his breathing control, waiting. He felt like a baby deer waiting for its mama like this. His only defense at this point was to stay hidden, and he hated it so much. He was so tired of having to do this to control his breathing and try not to scream. It was torture, pure torture. He tried to think of a plan, something in the store that he could use to take them down, but nothing in here was dangerous enough especially not for two of them. Roxy prowled out from behind a counter, her magenta markings casting pink light across glinting racks and soft fabric, taking each step carefully. He couldn't see all of her, only her feet and tail as she crept closer, feeling around for him. With it came the dragging of metal, her broken arm scraping its knuckles against the carpet, as if she didn't feel the pain that it must be causing. 
She swept rows of jeans and jackets out of the way with her only working hand, the hangers clicking together and squeaking on the beams that held them. She drew closer, closer, but not fast enough to pass. He had to breathe. It was taking too long. He tried to hold it, vision going blurry until he couldn't bear it. He let it go, taking in a quick breath. <laughs> Roxy stopped. Gregory froze, trembling as she changed direction, approaching step after step. Dread pounded up his spine in powerful waves, lungs already begging for another breath, heart bursting from his chest. She was right outside the rack that he hid in, sweeping the clothes aside inches above his head. Gregory stared in horror as her working arm reached in, finding the bar that he was hunkered beneath, grabbing at empty air. He was forced to stare at the awful damage that she had endured now, the darkness chased away by her menacing pink glow. Her black hair was tangled in her face, most of it escaping the messy ponytail that she had tried to contain it in. The smoking dark eye sockets were blacked out and streaming with waxy bits of melted metal. Her face was wet, paint smearing, strange gritty white scars showing all over her face. Her chin, her nose, her cheeks, all of them were marked with scraping scars that looked almost like claw marks. Claw marks? He hadn't done that. Roxy withdrew from the clothes, going to the other side, reaching in like before. His lungs burned, beginning to kick against his chest. Gregory's mind locked onto something. There was an empty clothes hanger right beside him, one of many that were discarded by messy customers. He took careful aim and threw it as far away from himself as he could. It clinked against another rack. Roxy's head snapped towards the noise, retreating from the rack that he was hidden beneath and reaching out, swiping at empty air again. He wasn't sure if she was far enough away. She was checking the clothing racks right beside him, only a meter or so away, and his chest was screaming for air, about to force him to pass out. He had to, he had to, before she came back and looked again. Gregory leaped up to his feet, escaping the rack with way too much noise, falling into the open with a gasp. He froze there, hunched only a couple meters away from her. She was huge, so ridiculously huge, more than ten feet tall, her back arched like a mountain on top of her skinny, sharp-edged figure and Roxy was supposed to be the smallest animatronic. Roxy's blacked out sockets stared right through him as he fought against waves of panic, paralyzed to the spot. Her lips peeled back, white fangs the size of steak knives humming bright in the dark, a growl starting in her throat. Whatever confident, spunky character the kids knew and loved during the day was completely gone, devoured by this rabid animal. Gregory lashed out at the nearest object, a mannequin, and threw it to the ground. Roxy exploded into an attack, swiping at it viciously with her claws, going for the mannequin. He fell away from her, glancing back to see her upon the mannequin, jaws closing over its featureless head, ripping it clean off in a shower of white fuzz without a moment of hesitation. Gregory broke out into a sprint in the opposite direction, the darkness of the store blurring into a pink haze as she realized her mistake in getting up and charging. Her feet jabbed into the carpet, nearly on top of him with only two strides, crashing down from above. Gregory grabbed another shorter mannequin and threw it to his left against the metal pole as he dodged to the right, letting her speed pass to get the loudly crashing pile instead. He caught sight of an archway. The exit. He made a break for it, realizing too late that... No, it wasn't actually the exit. It was the section in the middle of the store used for dressing rooms. It was too late to change his mind anyway. His shoulder hit the corner as he entered, rushing along through the long hallway. Several large doors lined up on his left and right, all of them hanging open, showing nothing but a sheet of black inside. Gregory ran into the last dressing room and darted inside. The light completely disappeared inside the small space, leaving him to bang his shins against the bench, hitting his face against the far wall. He felt around with a bleeding nose and ducked beneath the bench. He crawled into the far corner, pressing his back as far as he could against it, eyes prickling with tears. 
his shoulders scraped up against the wooden underside, a lump of gum sticking beside his ear, knees shaking roughly against the carpet burns that had torn several band-aids off already. Again, he closed his hands over his face, veins throbbing as he tried to calm himself, falling silent. Roxy's blind staggering bashed about outside, finding the entrance of the dressing rooms. She stopped. For a long time, nothing happened. He started praying, squeezing his eyes shut tight. Please, please go past. She started sniffing, like a dog picking up on his trail. She took a step inside. Her claws dragged against the walls. His heart spasmed wildly in his chest but he could only lie there and listen as the predator crept closer. She felt her way along the walls, each panting breath coming of a snarling hiss. One of the doors creaked open as she entered the first dressing rooms, hitting the far wall, claws scrabbling over the bench. After she was done, she closed the door, heading to the next one. She did the same, squeaking the new door out of the way, searching and then slamming it closed behind her. He took slow, tiny breaths, every instinct screaming at him to run, the bench pinning him below it. The blood of his nose was caking his fingers, making it even harder to draw in air. She drew closer, closer. He wanted to get up and lock the door, but he knew that that would only confirm to her that he was inside. Roxy's foot came down in the doorway. Neon green claws dug into the carpet, black tail twitching behind her, her broken arm dangling just below her armored knee. The door creaked open. She stepped inside. No, no, please, please. He couldn't watch anymore. Gregory closed his eyes again, her magenta light blazing outside of his eyelids, red veins thudding in his sockets. Roxy dragged her good hand over the walls, nails scraping roughly against the wallpaper. She was still heaving with breaths, throat raw. Gregory didn't dare to look. Her hand touched the top of the bench. She was standing inches from him, right outside, close enough for him to reach and touch. But he did not look. Roxy's claws dragged over the bench above his head. She leaned down, reaching beneath the bench next. He held on, his entire body pulsating with a suppressed shriek, shaking and tearing up and trying so, so hard not to breathe. Please, please, he prayed to anyone that could hear him. Please, I'm begging you, please don't let me die like this. Her hand groped around aimlessly, knuckles clacking against the metal support beams. Her hot breath washed over his face, smelling like melted plastic. Gregory was absolutely sure that she could hear the pounding of his heart. He wanted to cry to just get it over with, but self-preservation held him there. Stay, stay, don't breathe, don't. In a flash, he remembered a seemingly insignificant item that was now his only lifeline. He reached into his pocket, careful not to scrape his elbow on the bottom of the bench, taking out the screwdriver that Freddy had given him before. Roxy tensed at that. Did he make a sound? Before she could act on whatever she had heard, Gregory threw it far away from himself, making it clatter and hit the door frame. <laughs> Roxy's arm retracted, missing him by an inch. She got up, her black tail sweeping behind her. The glowing pink tip brushed against his nose. He did not move. She felt her way out of the room, her magenta light fading as she closed the door with a ka-chunk. Gregory took in a slow, even breath, chest roaring with his frantic heartbeat. Roxy navigated her way out of the dressing rooms, bumping and tripping against things the whole way. Gregory only dared to open his eyes when he was absolutely sure that she was gone. How the hell did he survive that? He could hardly believe that he was still alive, his heart still beating between gasping lungs. Gregory crawled out and onto the carpet, shaking all over, mouth gaped open. 
He just tried not to scream, regaining his senses, clenching his teeth tight to keep it all inside. When Gregory could stand, he took slow, light steps towards the closed door. For the dressing rooms, there was a large space left beneath the door, similar to a bathroom stall. He crawled beneath the space, out into the black hallway, leaving the cover of the bench. He strained his ears. The distant static of Chica and the clanking of Roxy's sloppy searching technique were moving past him, deeper into the store, leaving the entrance clear. Hope fluttered in his chest. Gregory peered out into the gray store, scanning around the forest of clothes, faceless mannequins staring back at him. The exit stood far away, outlined of pale starlight, beckoning to him. Gregory made progress towards it, hunkering behind rack after rack of clothes, leaving the sounds of Roxy and Chica behind. However, as he made his way back to the checkout, he slowed to a stop. Someone was missing. Gregory halted at the pile of torn-up snacks that Chica had tried to eat, sticking close to the counter and stopping beneath it, peeking out into the large exit. There, lying in a network across the floor, lay the hooked wires. They covered the tiles of the entrance entirely, hooks glinting in the dim moonlight, waiting for him like a spider's web. The patient owner of the wires wasn't visible, hidden away on the outer wall, judging by where the wires converged at. A point past the trap caught his eye. Faint traces of the purple paint were splattered from left to right over the empty mall, past a fountain. It faded the further that it got, but it was still clear which direction it went. Gregory just stood there for a while, his brain crackling like static, unsure what to do. Then his eyes landed on the pile of ripped snacks again. Broken chips scattered across the floor, gum packets ripped open in silvery frayed bits, candy wrappers spilling their sticky contents onto the carpet. He remembered the mannequin, the screwdriver. He wasn't as helpless as he thought. Gregory backed away from the checkout, back towards the shadows of the store's aisles. He returned to the clothes, taking the biggest, heaviest hoodie that he could find and carefully removing it from the hanger. He returned to the checkout line, sneaking away across the carpet, up to the wall of the entrance. Moon was right there, just on the other side of the wall. Gathering up his courage, Gregory took in a breath and tossed the hoodie onto the wires. The trap immediately snapped closed around the bundle of fabric, snatching it up in the hooks already coiled tightly around it dozens of times in the flash of a second. With the ground clear, Gregory made a break for it. He exploded out into the empty mall, Moon's yellow surprise left behind as he slipped over the paint following the direction that it had trailed away to. He couldn't take it anymore, no more holding his breath and trying not to make a sound. He still had one trick left. Freddy! Gregory wailed, tiny voice shattering the sleeping darkness. Freddy, help, help, please, Freddy! <laughs> A slash of pain lacerated over his calf, the one with the hurt foot. It was the hooks. Gregory! Freddy's roar came, followed by crashing footsteps in the direction that Gregory had been running in. Gregory tripped, kicking out, skin raking across the tiles as he twisted around, looking up to see the golden half-face of Moon, his fire eyes burning as hot as the sun, consuming the world descending on him, hooks striking down to capture him. And then 500 pounds of metal bear soared over his head and met Moon mid-air. <laughs> Moon cried out in surprise, the two falling into a tumble on the floor. Freddy had Moon's midsection clamped in his powerful jaws, rearing up and hurtling the much scrawnier animatronic through the air. Moon flew for two entire seconds before crashing right into Roxy, sending her toppling to the ground. Gregory caught sight of what happened to Monty further back. He was crumpled to the floor, covered in silvery claw marks, only just getting up with a completely disoriented look on his face whenever he saw Moon. Moon's body contorted unnaturally beneath Roxy, head spinning 180 degrees, fury burning in his eyes. Freddy stood up and backed away, keeping himself between Gregory and Moon. His lips pulled back into a ferocious snarl that didn't look anything like him, long white fangs glinting dangerously in the starlight. Gregory, stay back! 
Freddy told him, motioning for him to keep on moving while keeping his eyes on the thread. They already know that you're here. They can easily open me up to get to you. Gregory knew that it was safest to stay outside, but as Roxy and Moon recovered and began to circle them, he wanted more than ever to be swept up and forgotten about while the adults handled their conflicts. Instead, he clung onto one of Freddy's solid legs, trying to shrink into unimportance. Where is he? Roxy yelled, head sweeping from side to side as she wandered, slapping at empty air with her working arm while the other dragged on the floor uselessly. Where is that little brat? Moon, however, was locked onto them, his gaze deadly. The hooked whips lashed dangerously at his side, lengthening with each step. Freddy, he said, each word bitten out. Give it to me. I don't want to hurt you, but I absolutely will. No, I'm not letting you anywhere near him, Freddy growled back, arms still held out to shield Gregory. He's a child. Gregory is not the one you're looking for. Then who do you think did this to Roxy and Chica, huh? Moon scoffed, gesturing to them. Roxy tripped over her mangled arm, shuddering in pain as she tried to claw her way back upright. Chica and Monty were still further away. <laughs> I got her, Monty yelled. Don't need help! Monty was trying his best to hold Chica back, but she was much, much larger than him and appeared to be winning the struggle. She was crawling arm over arm across the floor, her stained claws leaving greasy marks on the tiles. Monty latched his jaws around her injured leg, trying to slow her down. Instead, though, Chica was just dragging him across the floor with her, kicking and yanking even though she should be crippled by the pain of the injury at this point, her beakless face shouting out static nonsense back to him. Freddy's gaze lingered on Chica and Roxy, distracted. And then, making it all so much worse, Freddy turned that look on Gregory. Guilt sank deeply inside of him. No, Freddy wasn't just distracted. He was mortified. Gregory, you... you wouldn't do this to them, would you? Freddy asked. Gregory couldn't speak. He just stared, taking longer and longer to respond, watching as Freddy's face slowly caved into horror. Moon pounced. Despite Gregory's lack of an explanation, Freddy still threw himself between them, taking the hit as Moon landed on his shoulders, whips flailing to grab hold. Gregory tripped over his hurt leg and scooted away, trying to recover, watching in fright as Moon's wires slashed and extended, the hooks gripping into Freddy's shell and scratching deep silvery lines into the paint, the awful noise sending razors into his eardrums. Freddy bent over, shaking himself back and forth, trying to dislodge Moon, his neck and shoulders already tied up in the wires. Freddy reared up and fell, smashing Moon to the ground, trying to find leverage to tear him off. Gregory couldn't witness the outcome, the vibrations of heavy footsteps rushing up from the left. Roxy lurched towards him, one of her arms outstretched in a wild swing, the other clattering behind her, the burned holes in her eyes full of a blazing need for revenge. Gregory screamed, throwing himself out of the way, Roxy's tail smacking him on the back of the head on her way past. Freddy, help! He cried, getting up, beginning to run, but he was too slow. Roxy was up, she was stomping just behind him, closer and closer, and- GET AWAY FROM HIM! Freddy appeared just in time, using Moon to smash Roxy off course, sending them both flying again. This is not who you're looking for! Freddy shouted, moving to guard Gregory once again. All of you are chipped by Vanessa! That's what's making you think you want to- No! Moon had sprung towards him again, not giving up. Freddy swung a broad paw at Moon, grabbing him, throwing him back with all of his might before the hooks got time to dig in. Roxy was up too, charging at them full speed, and Freddy snatched Gregory off the floor and dodged out of the way, keeping him clutched close in fuzzy arms, leaning over him protectively. Stop! Listen to me! Freddy roared, the unnatural fury in his voice frightening. Moon, you are under the influence of a chip! Vanessa is the one behind all of this! She's making you want to attack him! What are you talking about? Moon said, throwing his arms up. That thing broke Chica and Roxy! It's coming to kill us all! Don't be stupid! Freddy faltered, glancing back down to Gregory, the question desperate in his eyes. I, I'm sorry, Gregory burst out, unable to take this a moment longer. I'm so sorry, Freddy. I, I was scared you'd get mad. They tried to kill me. I, I had to stop them somehow. I swear it was all self-defense. I, I had no choice. See? Moon jabbed a hook-tipped wire at him. It knows what it did. 
Freddy stared at Gregory, pure, unfiltered hurt filling his gaze. Then it flickered, his eyes shutting. No, Freddy said, rounding his growl back on Moon's accusations. We are robots. Damage like this can be repaired, but Gregory can't be. I heard his screams. They tried to kill him because of the chips. If he says it was self-defense, it was self-defense. Roxy was sneaking around Freddy's left side, her long ears pinned back, every white tooth in her mouth on display. Do you even hear yourself? Moon yelled. Roxy and Chica wouldn't attack him first. It's against their programming. You're not making any... <sighs> Moon grated out a sigh, gathering himself for another go. You know what? Why am I even trying to reason with you? Moon, please! Freddy tried. Chica and Roxy attacked him because of Vanessa's chip. And you are too! Look out! Gregory warned, pointing at the quickly advancing Roxy. Freddy had just enough time to kick out and trip her, snatching Gregory up again before she fell on top of him. Freddy tried to get up, but Moon was already soaring through the air, hooks flashing. Freddy rolled to put himself in between Moon and Gregory, throwing Gregory away as Moon overtook him with the wires. Gregory's shoulders hit the floor hard, accidentally biting a hole through his tongue. He scrambled to get up, the taste of blood flooding his mouth, looking back to see the struggle. Moon let go of Freddy and then tried to launch himself back at Gregory again, but Freddy grabbed onto his legs and yanked him back, flattening both of them to the floor. Moon twisted around at an impossible angle, the whip slashing across Freddy's nose, cutting the rubbery coating open, but Freddy dragged him away from Gregory with a great heave, both of their metallic plating scraping awfully against the floor. Moon, stop! Freddy demanded. Listen to me! Gregory is not a capture bot! That doesn't make any sense! Roxy was getting up again, feeling around, her body racked of spasms, jaws parted. Then why did it run from me? Moon hissed back, his torso rotating again as he took a swipe at Freddy's hands. It knows what it is! Moon's hooks dug deeply into Freddy's digits, yanking up on them, causing him to roar in pain. Still, he didn't let go. Ugh. Gregory is not the culprit here! You have the wrong person! Freddy gasped out. He, he didn't want to go with you because you were going to take him to Vanessa. She's the one behind all of this, Moon. She, she's been lying to you. Confusion stirred Moon's furious expression. What? Roxy straightened up, reaching around, ears flicking about, trying to find Gregory. He couldn't move. He was going to make a sound. She was too close. He tried to look around for anything that he could use, spotting a fountain not too far away. He wanted to hide behind it, maybe get Roxy to fall inside, but she was so close now that if he made any moves, she would hear it. What are you talking about? Moon shouted. Moon shouted. Vanessa has chipped you all. It's why you want to attack him. Freddy yelled, a horribly painful emotion tearing from his voice. She's the one that you should be after, not Gregory. He's a child. Just think about it. Why would you want to hurt a... <laughs> Moon yanked again, snapping one of Freddy's fingers right off, almost free. Please, I know you're scared, but you have to listen to me, Freddy cried out, still trying to keep him back. I know what it's like. I know you're so, so scared for your kids, but if you give this child to Vanessa, he is going to die, and you will regret it for the rest of your life. At that, Moon faltered, expression freezing. Gregory tried to run for the fountain. His footsteps alerted Roxy. Not having time to spoon-feed him logic, Freddy grabbed Moon tight and tossed him over his head, diving to stop Roxy next. Gregory darted away as fast as he could, the two hulking animatronics colliding, the impact shaking the ground, sending sparks through the air as metal cut against metal. Roxy's claws and teeth were flying, screeching awfully against his fur-covered shell as he tried to restrain her, being much too careful for what was needed to defend himself. Gregory tore his eyes away, watching Moon's spindly form pivot upright like a puppet string being yanked tight, dilated pupils locking onto him. The fountain! Gregory had to get to the fountain! Gregory burst into a sprint, making it around the circular base of the fountain, bad foot threatening to give out, the world streaking around him. His plan, unfortunately, didn't work as well as he thought it would. Moon caught up in less than three strides, splashing his way through the middle of the fountain like it was nothing, coming out the other side to intersect Gregory's path. Waterproof. Of course he was waterproof. Moon! Please don't hurt him, please! Freddy howled, trying to get away from Roxy, falling too far away, too far... 
Gregory was on the floor before he knew it, his head knocking into a trash can and spilling its contents. The wires were upon him, wrapping him up like a fly caught in a spider's web, the hooks digging in tight. He tried to think of some other plan, anything, but the terror surged up his body so strongly his thoughts became wild and frantic, not making any sense. Get off of me! What is wrong with you? Gregory cried, thrashing hopelessly. Freddy, help! The wires only got faster, snaking up his body, locking his legs together, marching up his torso, wanting to strangle him. Gregory reached out to the trash can that he had run into and tried to smash it against Moon's head, dirty wrappers and empty styrofoam cups scattering everywhere, not really doing much to dislodge him. He tried to hit him again with the lid, but Moon shouldered it out of the way, pinpoints of pain appearing all over Gregory as hooks needled their way deeper into his flesh. The wires were getting tighter, there was nothing else for him to reach out to, and he knew that Freddy wouldn't be able to fight off all of them in time. He was trapped. Right now, on the dirty floor amongst the straws and discarded plastic lids, he was breathing his last breath. <laughs> the desperation burst up through his face in a wail. Even though he hated being this weak, hated being reduced to a whiny little child, a kid his age couldn't take this. Gregory collapsed against the ground and started crying, not knowing what else to do, the hot tears spilling past his ear to his hairline, sobs kicking their way out from deep inside of him. He sounded like a kid, just a stupid little kid, knowing that he was caught for good this time. The wires stopped. Gregory trembled beneath him, waiting for the hooks to finish wrapping him up, waiting to be torn apart by a delusional robot. But Moon didn't continue. Gregory peeked just in time to see Moon's face. His eyes were glassy, his features going slack for a moment, before the tips of tiny yellow triangles tried to poke their way out of his head. Moon shuddered, but his eyes didn't leave Gregory, struggling to force his brother back in. No, no, he's not, Moon growled, overriding their systems with relative ease. It's a trick, it's a trick. An idea, an actually good idea this time, clicked in his head. He could still get out of this. For Moon, he couldn't fight and destroy him. He had to try something else. Gregory would have liked to say that he was crying only to fool Moon, but in reality, the tears are going to leave his eyes whether he wanted them to or not. But now, instead of kicking at him, he curled up into a little ball, pressing his arms over his face to protect his head, letting the desperate sobs escape and overwhelm him. <laughs> please, please don't kill me, he whimpered, trying to sound as tiny and helpless as possible. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it went on for maybe a solid 15 seconds, not fighting back at all, even though he hated it. He heard a strange noise from Moon and peeked out from behind his arms just in time to see Moon's hooks turn against their master. His right hand's wires retreated from Gregory, instead slithering up around Moon's arms, up his shoulders, his neck, plunging down his throat. Moon spasmed and fought against himself, toppling over with a crash, struggling to keep away from Gregory as his left hand's wires continued to trap him and tighten over his flesh. <coughs> with a snap and a yelp, Moon coughed up a tiny bit of purple metal, one that skittered across the hard floor several feet. Moon fell limp, eyes blanking out. Before Gregory could register what had happened, there were several huge, clunking footsteps that shook the floor, gaining on them at an alarming speed. Chica incoming! Monty's call was their only warning before Chica reared above them, feathers flying, a fearsome cry bursting from a shattered face. He was still wrapped up in Moon's wires. He couldn't move, couldn't get out of the way. Before her stained claws came down on Gregory, he was yanked backwards across the tiles by the wires that had trapped him. Chica crashed down on the spot that he had been moments before, her crazed orange eyes still fixated on him as she swiped again. Like before, he was pulled out of the way, this time dragged much farther. When he was out of her range, Moon's hooks released him, snaking back into his arms as he jumped between Gregory and Chica. Chica staggered lopsidedly, looming above Moon. She was huge, even compared to the other animatronics, built sturdy as a tank similar to Freddy. Moon was just as tall, but he was made of thin, delicate parts, not heavy enough to hurt a kid just by an accidental misstep. Still, Moon didn't back down, yelling up at her. Wait! Th th there was a chip! I, I found... 
Chica obviously didn't care, sweeping a feathery arm at him the size of a tree limb. Moon darted out of the way, springing off the cracked tiles to leap up at Chica. He clung on tight to her shoulders, making her stagger back from surprise. Chica tried to smash him with a fist, but only managed to hit herself in the face. Gregory watched in bewilderment as Moon slipped between Chica's tearing swipes. Chica had power behind her punches, but Moon was much nimbler, able to swing off of her joints and around her claws before they had the chance to react. All the while, Moon's wires extended, snaking around her, rapidly beginning to overtake her systems. In a matter of seconds, Chica had toppled over onto the floor in an attempt to crush him beneath her, but it seemed that Moon had learned from Freddy, slipping out of the way to her other side as she crashed on the ground. Two of the wires twisted together around her face, slithering down her shattered mouth. Chica spasmed, squawking in repulsion. And then, with a tug, the hulking bird seized up, the static screech sputtering out into silence. She stayed in that contorted position for a few moments, stiff and quivering. And then, finally, her eyes went dark and she fell limp in the restraints. Before anyone could feel relieved, the attention was turned back to Roxy, who was still struggling against Freddy. Monty was trying to help, but Roxy had already done considerable damage to Freddy. She hadn't been able to crush him or crack the larger animatronic, but her claws and teeth were flying like mad, missing her target about as much as she hit it. Freddy already had long silvery scratches crisscrossing all over his plating, patches of his orange fur ripped out. One of his arms were clamped tight in her canine jaws, and Roxy was refusing to let go no matter how much he pulled back against her. It was clear why it wasn't a fair fight. Roxy was doing everything that she could to hurt Freddy, while the big bear was only trying to restrain her, taking hit after hit while still attempting to pin her instead. Roxy, stop! Freddy was yelling. We're trying to help! He was swiped in the face for that, Roxy's jaws clamping harder around his hand. In an attempt to help, Monty snatched up Roxy's tail, yanking on it with all of his might. Roxy cried out, letting go of Freddy, instead turning her rage on the gator, sending a heel right into his nose. Out of the way! Moon yelled, already off of Chica and bounding over to where the three fumbling animatronics were. Monty was kicked off of Roxy's tail just as Moon came down on her. Roxy howled and thrashed in disoriented rage, helpless against the coiling wires as they shot across her plating, pulling her working arm tight against her side. She tore at a part of his clothes, falling over with a crash, writhing and screaming for him to get off. She bit a chunk of his wires, trying to tear at them with her teeth. Instead, those hooks released their original points, looping around her jaws and forcing them wide open, one of them diving down her throat while the rest kept the entrance clear. After a few more thrashing attempts to free herself, the hooks found their target, pulling the chip out. Roxy buckled, roars cut short, falling limp. Silence echoed out after that. Panting, stunned silence. Gregory couldn't feel his own body. His eyes zipped from Chica to Roxy, back and forth, expecting for them to surge up again any moment now. After a second to collect himself, Moon slowly retracted his wires from Roxy. They reeled back into his wrists, the hooks clicking against each other as he stepped off, standing back. He held two of his wires aloft. Curled securely at the ends were Chica and Roxy's chips, tiny and harmless. Moon could only stare at them with a look of debilitating shock, the silence deafening in the empty mall. You... you were right, he said. Incident Report On January 17th, 2087, the animatronics got into the biggest fight that they've had in months. While taking pictures of guests, Roxy refused to stand beside Monty. Freddy attempted to calm her down, but Roxy only backtalked him and proclaimed that Freddy shouldn't be defending him because everyone knows that he hates Monty anyway. As she tried to storm off, Monty tripped her, and in retaliation, Roxy yanked on his tail so hard he fell. Chica tried to see if Monty was alright, which ended up making Roxy even more mad. Freddy continued to try and make the others smile for the picture, knowing that their managers were watching, but nobody listened to him. 
the public argument got so loud of so many threats thrown at one another, their managers had to drag them all down to parts and services to use the collars on them until they quit yelling at each other. None of them have spoken to each other since. Assessment. Do not tolerate behavior like this in the future. I am on my last nerve with that dog. Jeremy Miller. Patch requests. Parents are complaining of Roxy's foul language. She is getting creative with finding loopholes in her speech filters. We'll update speech filters soon. <laughs> Guys, I'm so scatterbrained. I just had to do the same take seven times to get this right. Let's try to make this the last take. So, woo! We did it. We're done with the second act and on to the third. So we'll be able to finally refresh the stupid picture on the screen so you won't be bored of it anymore. Yay! So uh, I hope everyone liked this fight scene. I've been really excited about this episode for a long time. So, you know, just thanks for staying with me until now. I have no idea why you guys are still here, but <laughs> thank you. I was really hoping that everyone would be able to make it this far. And so, yeah, this is awesome. I'm really hyped up. My dog is also excited, but I'm not going to do this take again because I've done it five times. So uh, the last piece of information is I can still post the next episode next Friday. We are getting kind of close to the cutoff point, except not close enough to like be worried about it. It's like in four weeks now, which is a long time, hopefully. So uh, uh, I can still post the next episode, so be ready and stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye. Say bye to my dog. He screams at shadows and walls for no reason.